Right, so I'm having a sit down for this video. I just shot the mini disc video, uh, the mini disc haul in a big box. And uh, I don't know which order I'm going to send these out on, but this is part of my two hour video recording session. I'm an hour in already, and my phone, which I shoot the videos on, uh, was getting overheated. So I thought I'd sit down. Now it's cooled down. I've calmed down. I've got a cup of coffee, and we're going to have a look at this. So I'm going to put a link in the description and probably up at the top of the screen now for my original video on this 1970s um, vintage calculator called the Casio Computer Quartz CQ1. And I paid quite a lot. I think I paid about £40 plus £10 postage for this. And it was listed as working. It's now no longer working. I did manage to get it working. And what the problem is, I think, is this, let me find something to point with. This is one of the battery contacts, which has got a little bit of corrosion on it, but that's not the problem. You see, it's loose there. What I think it does is it goes down into the circuit board just at the end of my um, pointy thing, my letter opener. It goes down through the circuit board and it's sold on the other end of the circuit board. And, um, and it's too loose and I think the solder's broken. The corrosion's probably got on there and the solder's broken. So how this is powered, the screen is powered by um, a, a, nine, a, a AA battery. And underneath this cover, which I'm not gonna open yet, but I will do in a minute, is two cell, uh, button cell batteries, which um, provide the power for the, um, vacuum fluorescent display or it might be the other way around I can't remember now I should look these things up and what was happening is if I moved the battery around a little bit I would get occasionally it would work and I was actually using it as my desk calculator when I was doing my tax returns a couple of weeks ago or last week but then it just stopped working entirely and I think it's just the spring has moved position um, now if it had not been working entirely when I shot the first video, then I would have asked the seller for a partial refund or a full refund even, because it was sold as working and it clearly was an intermittent fault and now it's not working at all. Now, a couple of days after I bought this one, I saw a listing for a broken one. I think it was 20 pounds, I can't remember now. It's all explained in the previous video. And that arrived after that video went up and uh, but it came in a just in a jiffy bag this whole thing was in a jiffy bag and i've not opened it apart from i took it out of the jiffy bag because it was raining when the postman delivered it and the jiffy bag which is a padded envelope was all wet and i didn't want it to get damp inside so i just took it out but i haven't looked at it oh look it's still wrapped so this is the cover that goes on the case on the stand so we've got another stand which is in pretty good condition. I love the feel of this. It's like a velvet type thing. Um, it's actually in better condition than the other one, which I've had, I've had a bit of a clean up. You, uh, apparently, someone commented that uh, you would pass a mains charging lead through that and it would go into the back of your um, calculator. And that's how it was powered by mains electricity. I won't do that because Batteries are fairly cheap now. They were very expensive in the 70s by comparison. Anyway, I bought this one because it was cheap. And unlike the first one I bought, it doesn't have the main battery cover. It has this battery cover, but not the main battery cover. And I think it was about £20 all in. And I thought, I'm going to pay £20 just for a battery cover. And if I can get the unit working, I can sell the unit on eBay. And recover some of my costs. I could probably sell it for £20 without a battery cover. And I've got my free battery cover. So that was the whole purpose of it. It's been quite nicely packaged, this one. There we go. Very nicely done. Well done, the seller who did this. Excellent packaging. I don't know whether you can hear the background noise of the fan on that computer. I've got a computer running where I'm doing an upgrade from Windows 8.1 to Windows 10 for a customer to give their laptop another two and a half years of useful life, hopefully. Let's be careful here. 
Now he said he couldn't get it to work, so I guess he's been doing some sort of um, attempt at repairing it. That was another bit of sellotape there. But when the other one broke, I thought what I could do, since this one's not working, I could use this one to test my repair skills. So I'm going to get that up to the camera and then peer around the camera to have a look at the quality of it. So it is actually in very good nick, this one. The screen appears to be, I just need to clean. Oh, the camera cannot focus when there's a shine, when it's trying to focus on something shiny. So yeah, it needs a bit of a clean, but not much. So that's in pretty good condition. <laughs> Essentially, this battery cover which I'm now going to try not to break, is the reason I bought this second unit. There we go. Ah, that's interesting. So here's where the button cells go. That's one battery contact for the AA battery. And then in there, I'm going to zoom in. Again, someone's left the battery in it and the battery has leaked. And there you can see, if I can get in there, that is where the spring contact, ah, so it goes, spring contact on this one goes over there. <clears throat> and then back up through the circuit board. So unless someone, unless the guy has, let's find somewhere soft to put that. So if he's, someone's tried to repair this and then has put the spring in a different position, Let's have a look at this one. Oh, that is what it is. So, oh, I can't see. I need a bit of light on this. Um, right, let me see if I can get a light on my camera. Okay, I'm not going to have the light on very long on the camera because it does, it'll just make the phone overheat again. So, let's have a good look inside here. See if we can get a focus on that bit there. All right, so the spring goes round around here and in at the back see at the end of my pointing device and then comes back up through here and I guess he's soldered underneath so I hadn't noticed that before let me try and move it so you can see that bit yeah you can see it moving the bit that's sticking back through the circuit board is moving now so that is where I thought the spring was joined it actually goes down under the circuit board and back up the back. So that needs a clean. That's the original one. The new one. That needs a clean as well. Okay, so. Oh, look at that. You can see there, that's the original colour of the circuit board. That brown colour. And this light brown colour is where it's been oh, completely eaten away by the, well we used to call it battery acid but it's actually alkaline. Right, okay let's switch the batteries over then. Now I'm assuming these batteries, oh hang on a second, there's no battery cover on this one. He said it had the battery cover. Ah, oh, is that it? There's the battery cover. It's in the instruction manual. So it's got this battery cover and then there's a battery cover just for the uh, button cell batteries or watch batteries whatever you want to call them so let's try and keep them together right I'm going to have to stop the video and uh, turn the lights off on the camera otherwise it's going to overheat the phone so hopefully you can still see that I do have some um, some battery operated LED lights um, but I don't like using those because they uh, they interfere the the um, frequency of those lights uh, doesn't match the frequency of the camera so you get like a strobing effect on there so let's see. I can't remember if I'll do this now it makes sense. it's supposed to indicate that you do it that way pull it that way but there's a little clip in here and I can't remember how it works there we go okay let's bash these out so let's look at these two battery things all right so that is the battery cover for the first one I bought, the expensive one, that's the battery cover for the cheaper one that's broken and that has got a lug broken off there, so that won't work. 
that's a shame but this one so the broken one here has this battery cover and the one that is less broken here i think they're supposed to have a longer lug on the end that one didn't have this battery cover so it's all very confusing now so let's get the batteries out of there put it over there pop these in here got to go in that way around yeah, so these batteries, I can't remember now, do these batteries, these batteries operate the clock, I think, the clock and the calculator, so, uh, and I think these, this AA battery is just for the vacuum for a fluorescent display, oh that's very loose, but having put that in there, I'll just hold it in for the time being, let's turn it to off, no, it's falling out and yeah look it's, there's not enough pressure on that spring so i think someone's tried to repair this what i'm going to do is jam the end of this down to put a little bit more pressure on the spring and make the contact between the battery and the battery contact there just to see if it's going to work very difficult to do no nothing at all so I'm going to have to clean up these. Yeah, that's just too loose there. So, I think what I'm going to have to do. Should we do it now? Yeah, I'm not going to fix it. In fact, I'm going to take a sip of coffee in a minute. I'm not going to fix it, but I'm going to take it apart. And this one might. This one has got a lot of damage to it circuit board whereas this one the circuit board is a lot less damaged so i think this is going to be the one i'm most likely to get working so what i'm going to do is take a part of this one and see how easy it is to get to the circuit board because if i damage it and taking it apart it's not working anyway and it's already got quite a bit of damage on it so give me a second to go and get something Right, so I've got my screwdriver kit, my iFixit screwdriver kit out. There appears to be only one screw in this. Try and just pop that on, let's zoom out a little bit. There we go, you can see a bit better there. Is that the only screw? I think so. Now I did see someone take one of these apart, or a couple of people take these apart. Yeah, so you can see it's coming apart sort of there. Okay, I must be missing something here. There must be... Hmm. I'm going to keep the camera rolling, but I'll probably end up editing a lot of this out. You don't want to see me struggling for 10 minutes trying to get a case open. Let's get my pry tools for work. I like my office, everything is within reach. So we've got some plastic pry tools. These are used for opening phones, or for me, laptops, more frequently. And they are very soft. It's supposed to be single use, but I find them they last for ages. Try and find one with a good sharp edge. And what they are is they're softer, they're softer plastic than the plastic you're trying to get open. So it's not going to damage the plastic of the case that you're trying to open. Ouch. It damage your finger though if you stab yourself with them. Now this feels as if it's held in there. Yep, time for me to do some YouTubing. Yeah, so it was 12 volt vids that I uh, did one of the videos I watched. <clears throat> and there are just a couple of clips, but I think they're friction clips, one there, one there, and on the other side as well. Um, I think. <laughs> but they had, those units had been opened before, whereas this one I don't think has. 
That'd be my guess anyway. Yeah, so you might be able to see the clip in here. It's holding it. I think it's just there. It's just holding it in really tough. So. Yeah, it's quite easy to get in there. So I managed to get into the case at the top here so I can see a bigger gap. Oh, there's the clip. Ah, oh, right, so they're push clips. I'll show you that. Just broke that piece of plastic. So I've got to figure out. Right, okay, so what we've got here, there's a black piece of, piece of plastic on this part, the inside of this part that fits in that hole there. So I've got to try and find a way of pushing down. There's another clip here, pushing down on that clip there, on, on this side, so I don't break that bit of plastic on this side. I'm gonna zoom out a bit because uh, I keep coming out of shot. So I think, ah, uh, here's, here's the way to do it, I think. So you put your pry tool in, there's shapes like that. Put your pry tool in and lift it up and then it pulls on this piece of black plastic hopefully that didn't break it Ooh. oh my god nervous now so now i need to push down on the silver plastic and up on the black plastic to try not to break the clips on the other side Right, oh, there's a cable there. So let's have a quick look at my clips. That one's intact. That one's intact. I'll see from this angle. That one's intact. Oh, you can't see. That's shocking. That one's intact. That was the one I broke off. So that's how you do it. You have to get a pry tool in there and lever the um, the black plastic part away from the silver plastic part so you don't break all your clips. Okay, right, let's have a look. Here's the spring. And we're in the wrong side, aren't we? We need to be in the other side of the unit. Oh, no, I knew this was going to be a problem. Let's zoom out. Right, there's the spring. Uh, damage on that board but the problem is the bit i think i need to repair solder on both units is the other side of that you see it's all floppy there so i think that there's a blob of solder the other side of that that's been eaten away and the problem is is the, it's the other side of this circuit board that i need to get to oh no I'm worried about pulling that cable that off. I wonder what that's for, actually. Oh, that's the other battery connector, isn't it? Ugh. What time is it? How long have I got in my two hours? 20 minutes. I can't get this fixed in the time I've got. So I need to do a good job on this. Right. God, there's battery corrosion all the way over here as well. All right, I'm going to have to call this video uh, done for the time being. So, what I need to do, I think, I'm going to have to refer to those other videos the other guys have done, is I need to undo all these screws to get and the one there, and there's one around the corner there as well, and some under there probably, to get to the other side of this spring. Look, it goes in there as well. No, that doesn't. Because um, I need to resolder this on both units, I think. And I might have to bridge that connection. Now, this is getting right to the limit of my technical expertise. 
Um, now, in order to get to these screws, I think, can I get in there? I don't want to round them off. All right, in for penny, in for pound. Let's see if we can get in there. Oh, is that just the screw for that? Can I get into this one as well? Hopefully they're both with the same size. No, can't get to that one. So in order to get under here, <coughs> I've got to bend this circuit board up. These are metal contacts here and they bend. Is this held down? Right, I'm not going to do any more. I'm going to watch those other videos. Uh, and I'll probably link to those videos in this video as well. So, sorry, it's uh, not a fix, but we have unboxed this. I'm going to list this as an unboxing um, of a second unit and not as a fix-it video. And then when I've got more time, God knows when that'll be, I'm going to have a go at fixing this one as well. I'm going to probably have a go at fixing both of them. But what I do want to do is... Um, I am not an expert in soldering, but I have a big box of soldering stuff. And somebody asked me in the comments once, um, can you do a soldering tutorial? Now, I've watched a lot about soldering, but I'm not an expert. But I have been doing it on and off for about 40 years, just as a hobbyist. So I've collected quite a bit of soldering kit over the years. All of it real cheap. So we're, I'm going to probably do a video just going through my box of soldering stuff and then do a separate video to fix these because I think they'll appear, appeal to different audiences. So I apologise for not getting a, a fix-it video done on this. Think of it as an unboxing, which is what I'll list it as. Um, don't forget, as I nearly always do, uh, Patreons, if you support me on Patreon, um, at the Coffee Club level or above, then you'll get early access to my videos. So see the um, description box for a link to my Patreon. Thanks very much. See you in the next video.